Ukraine has been all over the news for the last couple of weeks and rightly so. The people are stuck under an unjust war which is shrouded with geopolitics, economical factors and God knows what else to be fair. And the media is exposing its hypocrisies in droves. Have a look at Jeremy Vine. There's rumours of a thermobaric bomb which is a sort of vacuum bomb which to be fair the US has used before in Afghanistan but the idea of it being used in Europe is, is, is stomach churning. I don't understand. Why is your stomach not churning when it comes to Afghanistan? Asalaamu As Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Which, to be fair the US has used before in Afghanistan but the idea of it being used in Europe is, is, is stomach churning. I don't understand. Why is your stomach not churning when it comes to Afghanistan? Is it because you're told that extremists were there? But extremists are there also in Ukraine. As we know from the news there's a lot of neo-Nazis there. But you'll say yeah but in Afghanistan and then you'll pause because are you trying to insinuate? Are you trying to promulgate? Are you trying to concoct an answer that's gonna insinuate and promulgate that everybody in Afghanistan is an extremist? Which is of course preposterous because you're not accepting the same in Ukraine. Is it because you don't look or speak like the Afghans? Well that would be a very odd criteria to employ just so you can feel empathy for somebody that's getting blown to bits. I mean that would be inconsistent with animal rights. That would be inconsistent with like three quarters of the globe frankly. And if you insist with this sort of stringent, racist, this skewed criteria then how on earth do you expect the rest of the world to feel sympathy for Europe? Because Europe also has extremists, Europe doesn't look or speak like us, then should we also adopt this criteria? No, because we are taught by the Quran to respect all regardless of colour, regardless of creed. And this is the problem with this whole liberalism and secularist mindset which prioritises pleasure over pain. The greatest good for the greatest number. Yes this is pretty much the creed of liberalism based upon who's in charge and who's leading the educational narrative. But when it comes to Islam this is objective. Yes you can get angry and wave your finger as much as you want but Islam is objective. It's unapologetic and yes it stays the same and it works. <laughs> That's the beauty of Islam. It works. And of course you cannot use any quote unquote Islamic country and make and pass a judgement against an Islamic ruling because technically speaking there's no Muslim country that's following Sharia properly. So this notion that we're seeing by politicians, oh this isn't the Middle East. But this isn't a place with all due respect, you know like Iraq or Afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades. You know this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European, I have to choose those words carefully. To yeah well just to put it bluntly these are not refugees from Syria, these are refugees from uh, neighboring Ukraine. I mean that it's, quite frankly is part of it. These are um, Christians, they're white, they're, um, they're very similar to people, many people who live in Poland. For me I'm sorry, it's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed, children being killed every day with Putin's missiles and his helicopters and his rockets. And this is not a developing third world nation, this is Europe. This is Europe. These are civilized people. Oh, these are Christian people. What sort of reporting is this? Yeah. And secondly, I mean what are you telling the rest of the globe? You are creating a narrative of us versus them, you are playing to the hands of the extremists, that's what you're doing and then when extremists are born, ah oh what? You gotta change your Koran, what's this Koran doing? We gotta change the rulings, no! Look in the mirror mate, look in the mirror! And this is the problem when you look at the stats, it's drone strikes that are creating more extremists. For example, many have argued they create more terrorists than they kill. The night raids in Afghanistan, I, I many have argued uh, yeah, they I, create more terrorists I, I than, they, than they get. I don't disagree with that. When you drop a bomb from a drone 
you're investing, you're, you are going to cause more damage than you're going to cause good. It isn't just top generals either. Former CIA counterterrorism chief Robert Grenier has admitted that drone strikes are creating more enemies than we are removing from the battlefield. That's blowback. Even some former drone operators themselves have pointed out that drone strikes have only fueled the feelings of hatred that ignited terrorism in groups like ISIS, while also serving as a fundamental recruitment tool similar to Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, look at the research. And when you ask MI5, the secret service of the UK, they're saying it's the people that don't have understanding of the religion. Now, now we ignore all these stats, mate. Now, nah, let's go to the holy text. Yes. I invite you to go to the holy text, but without the prism of this Western media propagandist mindset and read it yourself, I'm going to post the link in the description for a free Quran, as you say, and I would like you to read it and benefit and inshallah you accept Islam and you will see what the fuss is about and why I constantly come here telling you to do the same thing again and again. Guys, let's leave it there. Until next time. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum.